So I, uh, I come from True Wellness, which is up the road in Ambler, and I live in Harleysville, and I've known um, Rosanna and Denise for, well, I've known Denise for many, many, many years. I've known Rosanna what feels like many, many, many years, because I feel like I've had a total kinship when I met her. And we're really excited about this partnership that we've created, because we all have these huge hearts that want to help everybody, and what we know is that most people don't even know what we do exists, so which is why we put on workshops to educate people about what we do. But this workshop isn't for me, because guess what? I know everything I'm about to say. <laughs> this workshop is for you, okay? So if you have questions, if you want to understand something better, please don't hesitate to raise your hand, and I'd be happy to answer your questions. If I don't know, I would be happy to tell you. Rosanna, write that down, and I'll figure that out, okay? But the... I want to explain some of the basics of understanding of how your body works before I get into some of the depths of health. Can everybody see me okay and hear me okay? And thank you so much, Saltability, for having this in the salt room because we're all getting therapy while we're here. It's fantastic. So, you know, you're all surrounded by ions right now, negative ions, which is why we all feel better in this room. There's no Wi-Fi in this room, and you can feel it. It feels like we're on the top of a mountain. Do you feel that energy shift in here when you walk in? Anybody not feel it? Please raise your hand, be active. Because everybody, everybody can raise your hand. Let's see. Come on, let's go. Can we raise our hands? Let's go. Can you raise your hands? Excellent. Okay, because, did you raise your hand? No. Can you raise your hand? Yes. Thank you very much. I just, I, I, I want interaction because this is very boring if I'm going to sit up here and just disseminate information. But it's good for you to understand how the body works. So I'm going to back up a little bit. Regulation. Outside of our federal government, has anybody heard this term regulation? Yes. yes. Good. Work for banks. Okay. Outside of the federal government, <laughs> has anybody heard the term regulation? Good. Excellent. Have you been to one of my workshops before? No. Okay, good. PTA, physical okay, perfect. Excellent. Thank you for coming. So regulation is the concept of your autonomic nervous system. Your autonomic nervous system is in charge of all your involuntary mov movements, as well as some of the ones that you can, like blinking your eyes can be involuntary, but you can also f force yourself to blink. So your autonomic nervous system has two aspects. The sympathetic, which is your fight-flight mode, right? Everybody's heard of that? And your parasympathetic, parasympathetic side, which is your rest, digest, heal, relax, sit in the salt chamber, take in all the ions, and recover and relax mode, right? So the sympathetic and the parasympathetic side, the dance of the phone's ringing, it's my child, and they need me to pick them up, and I forgot, run over, sympathetic. Phone's ringing, 6 o'clock at night, I know that's nothing but a telemarketer, let the phone ring, right? Same exact thing happened, but the body responded differently, kind of where you're at in your head. Are you with me? Yeah. So you were driving down 73, right here, skip back the pike, and a car cut you off. Right? You slam your brakes on, you nearly missed the accident, and you feel your heart rate, right? You feel your breath go up, you feel everything. That's your sympathetic nervous system. As soon as you're like out of that for five, six minutes, all of a sudden you feel like, oh, I've calmed down, if your regulation works well. You've calmed down, your heart rate's reduced, your breath rate's reduced, and you go back into digesting your food. If your regulation doesn't work well, you're the person that has that happen, and then all day long you're off. Oh my God, I'm so spazzy, and oh my God, you wouldn't believe what happened to me today. Let me tell every person on the planet what almost happened to me today. I almost was in a car accident. Oh my God, it was so scary. Blah, blah, blah. Like, and they just never stop because their sympathetic, low, their sympathetic system, their fight flight, never turned off. And when your fight flight versus your parasympathetic digest, recover takes over, long term, you're going to start to burn out your adrenals, right? Because the bottom line is your Nervous system should 90% of the time live in this parasympathetic mode. Rest, digest, and heal. Maybe 10% of the time live in this fight-flight mode. So it's this balance between these two sides, but the ability of the body to go back and forth is the idea of compensation. I can appropriately compensate for internal and external stressors. My body can appropriately do that. And when my body can appropriately do that, I notice it because I sleep well, I poop well, 
a couple times a day, every time I eat, I, I have good energy, I digest my food appropriately, I don't get bloated and gas or tired when I eat food, I sweat appropriately, if I turn my seats on in my car all the way here for an hour and forget how hot I am, I should start to sweat just like I did on the way here tonight. So your body should go through this. And if your body's regulation is off, how do you know? I'm not sleeping that great, I'm not pooping that great, that slow down, maybe I get a couple headaches, I just don't feel right. And the longer you let that go on, the longer, the longer you let that go on rather, the easier it is for disease to set in. Because we are innate intelligence living this life in a physical body, right? Anybody disagree with that? Please argue with me about that right now, please. <laughs> Secondly, innate intelligence, your body's default mechanism is for health, okay? So if that's true, then why are 90% or I don't know, let, let's just say 50% because I don't know what the percentage is. I just made up a statistic like most people, but let's just say 50% of the population doesn't feel good on a daily basis. How many of you know people that wake up that have energy, have energy all day long, feel good and never complain? Besides me, who knows people like that? I think that's my dog. I'll give it to you. We have a lot to learn from dogs, a lot. First thing dogs do every morning, they stretch. Mm -hmm. I do. Yeah. They sleep a lot. They're in parasympathetic mode. And what would you do if your dog didn't poop for one day? Freak out. What happens if your daughter, your son, your or yourself, your husband, or something doesn't poop for a day? I'd be like cranky. But you don't do anything about it. But if the dog doesn't poop for a day, you freak out and you take them to the vet. And what's the first thing the vet looks at? They look in their mouth. And that's a whole nother workshop for a whole nother time. Okay. But the point is that the dogs have a lot to teach us because they love everybody, they're very parasympathetic, they sleep a lot, they stretch before they do everything, they eat multiple times a day, and they poop multiple times a day. And they have plenty of energy, right? So that's how we should live as well. And if we don't, then we know something's off. Now, your body's job is to do that. That's what the brain is about. Like the brain is sending signals. There's more signals going from your gut to your and your heart to your brain than the other way around. But the autonomic nervous system's job is to make sure all the other organs are working well and everything's going as it should be, right? If it gets off, then we look for why. Most of the time when people are not compensating for the stress they're under, it's because they don't drain appropriately their toxic load. They can compensate for it at some level, but they can't get it out. They don't sweat appropriately, they don't poop appropriately, or they don't pee appropriately, or they don't breathe appropriately, or they don't bleed appropriately. These are the five ways we get things out of our body. We poop them, we pee them, we sweat them, we breathe them, we bleed them if we're still of a bleeding and of the sex that bleeds, okay? So this is how your period should go. Oh, I'm bleeding. That's the sign I know I'm my period. Not that my breasts are sore, I have headaches, I have cravings, I'm bloated, blah, blah. That's all sign of illness. You know how menopause should go? Oh, I stopped bleeding. That's it. Not hot flashes and mood swings and all the other crazy things that people go through when they have menopause. It should be a celebration of, thank God I finally can't get pregnant and I can have all the sex I want. Hallelujah. Right? So that's what menopause should look like. And, men and uh, menses should look very, very like I come, I get it every 26, 28 days. I bleed for three days and I move on. If I run across the parking lot really fast, my armpit should get a little sweaty. If I ate three times a day, I should poop three times a day. I should go to bed and sleep for eight hours, wake up rested. Outside of that, it's lack of regulation. Your drainage of that, of your entire system, they used to think happened through the venal system. Western medicine, every, well, not everybody, Western medicine, allopathic, here in this country, medicine, thought that it was the venal system, the veins, that got all of our trash out. And about, it's been about eight or nine years now, it's called the Starling Principle. They discovered they were wrong. And God bless them, they at least admitted it. <laughs> and they said, we were wrong, it's actually the lymphatic system that does it. You know, you have 50% more lymph cells and fluid in your body than you do blood. <clears throat> who learned about their blood and biology in high school? Everybody. Who learned about your lymph ever before tonight? Okay, except for the physical therapy <laughs> assistant who went to college, 
for body therapy, and I appreciate that so much. And we're so glad that somebody gets trained in the lymphatics. But can you attest to how many people do not know about their lymphatics outside of your industry and my industry? Unless they've had cancer and then everybody knows about lymph, right? It's 80% of our waste dump. We have 50% more lymph fluid in our bodies than we do blood and nobody knows about it. Is this a problem? Yeah, how do we get rid of it? Yes. How do we get rid of what? The fluid in our bodies, but the lymphatic system is old. Really good question. Pee it out, poop it out, sweat it out, breathe it out, bleed it out. And if we're not doing that? Ah, really great question. That's <laughs> when it gets backed up. Okay. So I have five, uh, two ways I can get to Philadelphia for this analogy, because Kelly doesn't know five ways, even though she's lived here for 18 years, how to get to Philadelphia outside of two ways, okay? So I just don't know. But there's two ways, let's just say. The Schuylkill and Broad, oh, there's three. Schuylkill, Broad Street, and Lincoln Avenue, right? That's how you can get to the city. The Schuylkill shuts down. How's it going? How, how are you getting in the city for the Philadelphia Phillies tonight? Well, not tonight, but you know what I'm saying. <laughs> you can still get there, but it's going to take you a little bit longer, isn't it, right? Now, if they close Broad Street down and you only have Lincoln Highway, how's it going to go to get to the city? You can still get there, but it's going to take a little bit longer, okay? So now if you close down that, everything stays inside. Now what happens? You can't get to the city, and the city is health, okay? You need to get the traffic flowing all the time to get to the city. So I like to use the analogy of highways. So your lymphatics is where we dump the waste out. We have 50% more fluid of our lymph than we do of blood. And our lymph does not have its own circulatory system. It does not have its own pump like our heart will pump out our blood. And the lymph fluid dumps into the cardiovascular system. And then the cardiovascular system continues to get it out where we bleed, pee, poop, and sweat it out, okay? But lymph fluid should be just that, should be fluid. Now, what makes lymph fluid thick, like gelatin, is sedentary lifestyle. Wi-Fi. Who lives in a home where you don't have Wi-Fi anywhere near you? Right, exactly. Tight-fitting clothes. Cow dairy. Bananas. Raw onions. Metals and chemicals. Anybody have any idea why we have such a sick nation when we're only exposed to basically sit in a chair, drink cow dairy for your health, and then make sure you have your silver fillings and make sure you have the best iPhone with all the best Wi-Fi. And I can't figure out my, why my kid's brain doesn't work or why my brain doesn't work. The lymph is your toxic waste dump that when it gets thick, it stays inside, and now all the traffic is sitting on the Schuylkill, sitting on Lincoln Highway, and sitting on Broad Street, and nobody's getting down to 676 to get down to the center of the city, and everybody's wondering what's going on. So change my analogy a little bit. Now we're going to talk about toll booths, okay? Because I, I, once you get to the city, you're past the toll booth, so my analogy's kind of lost its way, all right? But let's say the toll booth is the node. So with your lymphatics, hold on, visual. Although it's dark as heck in here, so we'll do our best. Go oh, right there. Okay. Okay. So this is what your lymph system looked like. You can see how there's um, vessels that kind of look like veins, right? And then you have these, and I'll pass this around so people can look at it. So then you have what look like seeds where they're a little bit bigger in areas, okay? And then the vessels run into these nodes, and you have a concentration of nodes at the joints, all the joints, and then there's deeper nodes deep into the joints. So you have superficial lymph, vessels, and deep nodes, okay? So pass it around and look at your highways of your lymphatic system, which does not have a pump. It only moves when we move. So if I'm moving up here, I'm moving my lymph. If I stand up, I'm moving my lower lymph right now, right? If I do jumping jacks, I'll actually move my upper and my lower lymph because I'm moving my arms. When my muscles move, when the smooth muscle moves, is when my lymph moves. Because the lymph doesn't have a backflow, it only goes in one direction, but the nodes and the vessels, they move in like this fashion, okay? So as my muscles move, the lymph vessels go, oh, push the fluid, but if it's thick, and it's like yogurt instead of water, right? It's gonna go 
So the first is we want to help you thin your lymph by stopping eating cow dairy, number one. Limit your Wi-Fi as much as possible by coming to saltability and eliminating that exposure at least for an hour or two hours. But you can also turn your Wi-Fi off at night. It doesn't have to be running all the time. You can turn your phone on airplane mode. Hold on one second. You can turn your phone on airplane mode as often as possible and it doesn't need to be on you. Just limit your exposure as much as possible to Wi-Fi. If you have a laptop, get it off your lap. <laughs> Don't put it on your lap. Okay? There's a lot of different things you can do at home to reduce your exposure. Stop eating cow dairy. I said it before. I'll say it again. <laughs> With the exception of um, butter and heavy cream you can actually eat. Because that's the fat, not the protein. It's a whole nother, like I said, it's a whole nother subject. But the, so we limit your exposures to the things that clog the lymph. So it cut, starts to become a little thinner. We move, we show you how to do different movements and wear less tight fitting clothes. And then we come in and we do body centered therapies to help stimulate that lymph a little farther. And we do it with two different ways. We do manual stimulation. So it's a body centered therapy where we're literally stimulating the nodes, which I'll talk about further in just a second. And then we do this machine, which we'll show you, which further enhances the ability of the lymph nodes to do this, okay? so. Back to my analogy. You have a lymph node, which is a toll booth, okay? And all the fluid should come up, go through the toll booth, exchange with the toll booth, and go on. So what happens at a lymph node? At the lymph node, when things come in, it's pathogens, it's metals, it's chemicals, the white blood cells inside the lymph nodes go, oh, I know what you are. Let me stimulate the macrophages specifically, which are white blood cells, which are specific. Everybody know what the white blood cells do? It's your fighter cells versus your red blood cells. Isn't that more of your immune system or not? Yes, and your lymphatics is part of your immune system. Your white yeah. blood cells are your fighter guys, right? They're your soldiers going in and making sure nobody gets you and overtakes you, okay? So inside the lymph nodes is where your macrophages, your white blood cells, determine what kind of pathogens it might be up against and then create the proper white blood cells to be able to get that deactivation of that pathogen and then move it through the system so the body can poop, pee, and sweat out the pathogens or the metals or the chemicals or whatever it is, okay? So it's kind of like um, a station, so to speak, right? Where things are happening and then the fluid goes through on the other side, it goes through the vessels and it continues. So you have major lymph nodes here and here. I wanna make sure not to get my mic. So your thoracic trunk is above your left subclave, your left, um, what do you call it? Co collarbone, thank you, collarbone, okay? So your, um, your entire body and your left arm all drain right here at your termini, your end station, okay? For your body and your left limb, your, your left arm. Your right above your collarbone, um, your subclavicle right here is where your right arm and your head drain. So these are your two main exits of your lymph. And then they drain into the cardiovascular system. Before the thoracic trunk termini, there's a cisterna collie that sits kind of below your stomach and above your belly button. It's another larger, they don't actually call it a node, but they give it its own name. I don't know what the requirements are to give a node its name, but it's just called the cisterna collie. It's kind of really hard to spell, but it's a cool name. And it sits right here. And you'll often hear this when you're doing different therapies with people and you hear, no, no. You've all heard that when you're getting body work. And blah, blah. That's your cisterna collie opening and pushing the lymph up to your thoracic duct so it can drain out. So you have these stations where the nodes are. I know, I know you have a question about Wi-Fi too. I haven't forgot that. So the, you have the station with the nodes and then you have the, the flowing lymph vessels up behind it. Okay, but if the node is thick with fluid and full of pathogens and overwhelming, this node starts to not be able to do this and it can't get stuff out on the other side. So what happens is the traffic that's trying to come into the node or the exit kind of starts to get backed up. And then traffic gets backed up and then traffic gets backed up. And now nobody's moving and everybody's like, well, you know, how do you move the traffic? And everybody knows dry brushing, right? And so they start dry brushing at your feet. Makes absolutely no sense to me whatsoever. Okay? If my node is at the exit, right, don't I have to move the traffic at the exit first to get the traffic back at the back end to move? Because if I move, try to move this traffic and the exit's closed up here, what's going to happen? 
nothing is going to happen. Nothing except a pile up. Because if I push that car, it's going to hit the car ahead of it, 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 the car ahead of it. It's going to go beep, 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 go through the toll booth. Nope, nothing's getting through the toll booth. So the first thing we have to do is open up the toll booths. Once we get the toll booths open, we continue to get all the traffic to flow to the toll booth that's closest to it, and we work on the proximal, the farthest last, and the closest first. It's very different teaching lay people than practitioners. Totally different terminology. So if I say something that doesn't make sense, stop me. So when you're working with the lymph, you want to start close and get these open. And you can manually pump them. There's things you, we can teach you to do. And you can do body-centered therapies uh, here at SaltAbility and at True Wellness to continue to enhance that. Our job isn't to mobilize your lymph completely. It's to enhance it to move so that and educate you about what's making it thick so you can drain out your toxic load, right? How many of you have ever gone through a detox protocol of any kind whatsoever in your life? Raise your hand. Only about half the room, I'm surprised, okay. So this is a very common thing that people, oh, I, I went through a detox, I went through a detox, I went through, this is like the fad, going through a detox. Your detox is only as good as your drainage. If you don't poop, you don't sweat, you don't pee appropriately, you don't bleed appropriately, the last thing you wanna do is start to detoxify. You need to drain before you detoxify, right? So I want to drain out all that traffic, but I'm going to get rid of the cars first? Well, how can I get rid of the cars until I move the traffic? It doesn't make any sense because the traffic's not going to go anywhere. The tra cars are just going to move around because they can't get through the toll booth. That's how you get rid of stuff. You get it through the toll booth. If it's not going through the toll booth, you can try to get rid of all the cars you want. They're just going to circulate around because they can't get through the toll booth until the toll booth opens. That's detox without drainage. You with me? Mm -hmm. So mobilizing your lymph can be very simple. What we find is that the myofascia, does there anybody besides the physical therapist that know what myofascia is? And Donna? OK, good. So good, two of you. Congratulations. So wait, first, before I get to myofascia, what was your question about Wi-Fi? You, uh, no, it wasn't uh, Wi-Fi in general. It was what you said about um, everything, Wi-Fi, cow dairy, the fillings. Um, chemicals, um, banana is science. That, is that fact or is that a theory? Evidence-based, empirical evidence that you can documentally prove on brmi.online. Or you can go to etiology. Dot NZ, which is the organization in New Zealand, Desiree Despong, who's in charge of etiology.com, who I've studied most of all my lymph work with, who for me is the utmost authority in the world on lymph, to be honest with you. She knows more than anybody I've ever met. I put her knowledge up against any doctors at all. And she will be speaking at True Wellness in March at some point. I don't remember the date, but at some point she's coming in from New Zealand. I, mean, I drink a lot of milk and I have a mouthful of fillings, so I'm just Oh, I'm so glad you brought that up because I already noticed the fillings when we were having a conversation out there. <laughs> and that, per our conversation, please bring that up at the end because I really want to talk to you personally in front of everybody, if that's okay with you, Donna, yeah. about what we started to talk about that I was like, let me go start the workshop yeah. because it's key to understand. Chasing down the symptom doesn't matter. Right. Getting to the underlying cause is what matters. So when we work with the body, our first thing, I don't care if you have silver fillings, I don't care if you have scars, I don't care if you have immune challenge, the first thing we have to do is get your lymph working. Because anything we do after that's gonna go better because your drainage is better, okay? So I'm gonna stop for a second and before I go to the myofascia, do you have any questions about the lymph, the lymph nodes, lymph vessels, how it works, what stimulates your lymph, what doesn't? Donna? So like if you got cut, would lymph fluid come out? Or if, is it vessel, like blood vessels vessels or is it different? No, it's like you're not going to be able to tell the difference in what comes out in your blood because it's all, it's in the plasma. So your blood is part plasma, the lymph is in the plasma. It's microscopic level, you're not going to be able to see it. But when your blood comes out, there's lymph fluid in there that's more lymph than it is blood. Okay. It just looks all red because of the hemoglobin. So you're actually bleeding lymph? You're bleeding every, yes, as well as plasma and minerals and yes, mm -hmm. and uh, then you. A question about the Wi-Fi and like why that affects things. <sighs> that for another day? <laughs> That's a whole other subject on its own. But so 
Wi-Fi keeps your body in total sympathetic mode all the time. Your body doesn't know that it's not in fight flight because it keeps you in beta waves versus alpha waves. So you never get into deep sleep. So if you're in sympathetic mode, your lymph is never going to move because your parasympathetic is stopped. And that's not just like the psycho part of like, oh, I got something on my phone, like an email, da 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 da. Just like the nature of having Wi Fi. Like the, even if your phone's not on. If your phone's not on, the Wi Fi in the house. Oh, okay. Do you live in a single family home? Yeah. So do play an experiment with me. Turn it off at night, at 10 o'clock at night, turn it on at 7 o'clock in the morning. Do you have dogs? No. Okay. Do you have kids? Yes. Mm -hmm. Perfect. <laughs> turn it off at 10 o'clock at night and never turn it on for three days and tell me how different your kids are. Mm -hmm. What's that? I said I might have a grumpy house and the people can't get their emails. <laughs> so... Yes, you might, but you might have kids that are a little happier and a little healthier and sleep a little bit better. And if they sleep a little bit better, mom and dad sleep a little bit better, and then that makes everybody happy, right? We don't care about emails as much as we do good quality sleep and healing. But if you really want to research that, go to Dr. Klinghart's website, or there's this website called brmi.online. I've mentioned no. like seven okay, like, because it'll give you a lot of information about Wi-Fi. There's a lot of four. There's a ton more authorities than me about Wi-Fi, but I would say this to you, okay? In the last 20 years, the incidence of autism and disease has skyrocketed in this country. And I have noticed on my cell phone, and I live in a very specific place in Harleysville by a quarry with a very limited exposure to anybody near us purposely so we were not near high tension wires or cell phone towers or anything else. When we moved in our house eight years ago, I had one signal and it was our house. Our neighbors have not changed. I have an 85-year-old guy on one side of me who I can guarantee you does not have Wi-Fi. And the other side of me is a, a woman from Russia who does not have Wi-Fi. We asked her before we moved into the house. Okay? I have no Wi-Fi on either side of me. But somehow the signals have changed. Because now when I'm in my house and my Wi-Fi is off, I turn my phone on, there's four other signals that show up on my phone that were not there before. My houses aren't any closer but they've changed the Wi-Fi signal. And they're getting close to going to that 5G Wi-Fi signal. We really don't have any idea what the exposure of Wi-Fi has done to us long term. So if you want to be part of that lab experiment, I invite you to use all the Wi-Fi you want. And if you want to be part of the lab experiment I'm in, I limit my Wi-Fi because I really like my brain waves and I really like to heal and I really like to live to be 120 healthy, happy, and fall asleep when I'm in my, or, fall asleep and die is what I was trying to say. Die by falling asleep or whatever the case may be. So Wi-Fi is a wonderful opportunity for us to access amazing information. And I had the best question ever from like, a, I think he's 14. He sat on my table and we were doing some muscle response testing and teaching him about Wi-Fi. And he said, he's very clever. And he said to me, well, if my Wi-Fi is on, but it's going to my Xbox or whatever, and the Wi-Fi is on, and the Wi-Fi router is on that side of the house, and it gets the or that side of the room, and the Xbox is on that side of the room, and I sit on this side of the room, the Wi-Fi is not going to get to me, right? And I go, that is so cute that you think the Wi-Fi signals get the Xbox and just stop. <laughs> like, oh, we're here, we've arrived. They are traveling all day long, every day, through every cell of your body, and you have. You are, we all are vibrational beings. You know that? Nothing in life is solid. Everything vibrates. Everything works with ones and zeros, essentially. Everything works with ionic exchange. So how does the TV signal get to your TV when you aren't plugged into a wall? It's a bunch of zeros and ones going through the, it's a bunch of vibrational information going through the airwaves. And you're trying to, not you, I'm picking on you. And thank you for asking the wonderful question. But the reality is, and, and people think, not you, because you're smarter than that, people think that that's not affecting them? I didn't even know turning your phone off was a thing. Oh my God. Oh my God. I'm and so have... glad you're here. <laughs> oh, turn it off. Or my yes. husband, or my child, or our iPads. Oh, I mean, oh, I'm, like, like my, I'm like mortified right now. Good. Because honestly, my goal tonight, if nothing else, is to start to make you question your life and how you're living it so you can start to live it healthier and better.
Well, is turning off the phone enough, or do you have to turn it off at the Router. Turning off at the router. So remember back in the day when, back in the day it was a Tuesday, remember that? No. When, when I was a kid, okay, we used to leave for the weekend, and we lived in a very small town. I don't know why my parents did this. Like, everybody knew we were away. It's like 3,000 people in my hometown. It cracks me up. But anyway, they plugged our lamps into these timers, and then the timers would go on and off depending and make people think that you're at home. I bought one a month ago and plugged my Wi-Fi into it. It was like, dude, why didn't I think about that three years ago? Because it became a big argument. Like, for many years, I have a five-year-old who's about to be six. And for, like, the last two to three years, he was all about it. Like, I turn the Wi-Fi in the morning, I turn off at night. Well, now he's getting to the point where, like, it's got to be your job, Mom. I'm like, I don't need another job. Well, it's got to be your job, Dad. I'm like, neither one of us needs another job. So... If you don't want to do it anymore, how are you going to accomplish this? Because it's a pain in the butt to remember to do it. And then all of a sudden, you're on your computer in the you know, other area, and you're like, oh, I've got to go turn the Wi-Fi on. You know? So I plugged in the timer, and now it's done. 10 o'clock turns off, 7 o'clock turns on. End of story. That's great. That's a good idea. Yeah. Right? Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> Cornell education at work. <laughs> Isn't it, is it, is this the right term, um, E and F, electric ma magnetic frequencies, right? Yep. That, I would Google that as well, because that's what's coming from the phone, which is messing up our system so much. Yeah, it's not just EMF. It's, it's not just Wi-Fi, rather. Thank you for bringing that up. I always use those terms interchangeably, because for me, death and death equals death. So Wi-Fi and EMF, all that. Um, this may be a premature And that's why we love these. Go ahead. Question. But um, my mom had a mastectomy and I removed her lymph nodes and it always mm -hmm. made me kind of like just didn't seem right because I knew that the lymph nodes way back when, like thirty years ago, seemed like an important role in her body. Like I just kinda knew that. But it also is the one thing that I understood that cancer likes to hang out in or something mm -hmm. and so it could transfer it through her body. Do you I mean do you is that true? <laughs> that is such a loaded question, so I will answer it as quickly as I possibly can by saying this. I, I laughed when you said, um, wait, what was it that you said that made me laugh now? I'll chuckle a little bit. You're because like, it didn't seem right that they would remove the lymph nodes. Oh, you were like, oh, because it, I instinctually I just felt like the lymph nodes had a purpose. Yeah. Like, I just laugh at that. Like, do you think he made a mistake and, like, he forgot something? Or she, actually, let's be honest. She forgot something? <laughs> like, really? Come on. You know, like, oh, I don't know what the appendix is for. And then years, like, in biological, Ayurvedic, homeopathy, in our world, no spare parts. Didn't come with any spare parts, please don't take them out. Oh, I was in with your gobbler and thought I'd do you a favor and take your appendix. Excuse me. And now they found a couple years ago, finally, oh, we store probiotics in our appendix. And it's a lymph organ, oh, by the way. Oh, you guys didn't know that? No. Oh, yeah. By the way, that's what the appendix is for. We've always known it as a lymph organ and it stores probiotics, but Western Medicine has finally figured it out. So it stores probiotics. So why does everybody need probiotics all of a sudden? Perhaps because they've been eating antibiotics for a long time and they have nothing storing their probiotics anymore because everybody's taking their appendix out. So the lymph node is your toxic waste dump. Why did your body get cancer? It's not a mistake. The body never makes a mistake. It's trying to compensate for an external internal stressor. Cancer is its answer. But by taking them out, wouldn't it have been better had they cleaned it or let it go or get, you know, pump it or how, whatever the term is used early to get it moving again versus removing them because it's been stagnant, right? And so they just, in her circumstance. So if the cancer has already okay. gone out to the sensitive nodes, right. which is what they're doing, they're testing the sensitive nodes to make sure that the nodes as closest to where the tumor is is not affected by the cancer as well. If it's traveled there, they're trying to cut out the cancer. Okay, what bioregulatory medicine comes from the stand of, you can't fight anything because it will fight you back. You can't. Listen, if you cut out the cancer and you don't change your lifestyle, how are you going to know the cancer doesn't come back? What causes cancer? Your lifestyle, stress, everything. Well, our environment. Yeah, there's not one cause. Yeah. There's multiple, nothing, not one thing causes one thing. It's multi-causational. So I cut out your breast or I cut, take off your breast, either one. I take a couple lymph nodes and I go, okay, we'll give you five years. We'll do chemo and radiation. If in five years you don't have any more cancer, we're calling a cure. And on year five years and one day when you get cancer in your left toe, we go, oh, it wasn't anything for the breast cancer. It was a cure in the breast cancer, but now you got cancer in your toe. It's all related. Everything is related. From the minute I was conceived to the minute I die, it's all one big unit of 
one thing relating to the next, to the next, to the next, to the next. And you can't take and compartmentalize or segment anything out. However, how we would address that situation from a bioregulatory standpoint is this. Go and get however you want it to handle your cancer that you feel completely congruent with. Chemo, radiation, mastectomy, lumpectomy, whatever you decide to do. When you're done, let's clean up your body so that you never get cancer again. How do, what do I mean by that? I want to change your internal milieu. I want to change your internal environment. I'll say that word real well. I'm not French. Milieu. Sorry, everybody at BRMI. It's M-I-L-I-E-U. Milieu. So your internal milieu, your internal environment either allows disease to happen or allows regeneration to happen. That's it. Health isn't a destination. I stand here and go, I'm healthy. And now for the rest of my life, I am here. It's a decision every day with the decisions I make, with the foods I eat, the things I think, the water I drink or don't drink, the exercise I do or don't do, the habits I have become my lifestyle and determine if I'm going towards regeneration or degeneration. We are an ever-changing, dynamic body that never is the same from one moment to the next. So as that continues to change, we have to keep up with the change. And if I got lost in what I was going to say, so we're just going to move on. <laughs> just, I got totally distracted with the lights there. I'm sorry I took my brain to another place. Um, I was on a roll too, wasn't I? You're talking about the how I was going to hand, how we would handle it beyond that bioregulatory approach. So handle that. And then we're going to look for what caused the cancer. Did you have a loss? Typically, there's a loss within five years of any kind of diagnosis of cancer, within the five years prior. And or, I'm not kidding you, at the Paracelsus Clinic, which is no longer exactly like it used to be, and Dr. Thomas Rouse, the guy that ran the Paracelsus Clinic, now has his own clinic called the Biomedicine Clinic, and Dr. Ottmeyer has his own clinic called the Abstin Clinic, but either one of those clinics in Switzerland, if you were to call them and ask them, have you ever had a breast cancer case that you've dealt with that had, did not have a root canal, both clinics would say absolutely 100% no. 100% of the time, if you have breast cancer, yes, you have the right answer. You will probably no 100% of the time have a root canal. Like before? Uh-huh. So the first question I'd ask your mom is, what is your dental picture? Do you have silver fillings? Do you have root canals? Do you have scars on your physical body? These are the three blockades that don't allow your regulation to work. So we would address your scars. We would have you work with a skilled very educated biological dentist. Do not have your silver fillings dealt with a proper dentist. Bad dentistry is way more expensive than good dentistry. Secondly, I would handle any root canals or any other things like that if there's a cancer diagnosis. Then we would look at, is the drainage there? What is the body up against? Always drainage, always, always, always lymph. There's never a time to not do lymph. And most people's lymph are clogged because of all the reasons we talked about that they're not even aware of that's making their lymph stagnant. And it's building up their disease. They're not getting it out. And people are getting sicker and sicker and feeling worse and worse. And we live in the most wealthy country in the world with the sickest population, but the most exposure as well. Living in a Western society, if you want to be healthy, go live in Okinawa, get off the grid and enjoy your life. I, my husband has tempted me to go to move to Belize for years, just like disconnect and go live in Belize and massage people for a living. <laughs> if if it wasn't on my heart to change medicine and change the world, I'd do that in a heartbeat. But I grew up in a house, I'll get to you in one second. I grew up in a house with a father who had Hodgkin's disease. He had cancer seven times. He was diagnosed with that before I was born. I grew up in a house where I felt like there was a loaded gun that I had no idea if it was going to go off at any moment in time and when it might go off or why it would go off. Because in our life, in my life, I didn't know growing up what was the cause of cancer. Nobody knew it. Nobody knew if Hodgkin's disease was genetic or not genetic. And I was scared to death that no matter what I did, I might get cancer. And nobody could tell me how to prevent it. And I wanted to be a doctor. And I went to Cornell University to become a doctor. And I was thrown into a car accident, as it would be. And it forced me to deal with chronic pain for three years. And I went from one specialist to another till I found somebody that had something else beside a prescription pen and a little manager pain speech for the rest of my life. And I finally found this wackadoo guy who's now my husband. And um, <laughs> he was doing all this weird regulation stuff and testing my regulation and doing all this stuff. And all I can tell you is 30 days later, I'm on some Chinese herbs. He's done some emotional release. And I'm off my Viking and my Flexerol. And I don't understand what the hell happened to me. And that was 
21 years ago and I never looked back. I just said, I'm going to hang out with you until I figure this out. And we got married about seven years ago. <laughs> and we now have a five-year-old. But you know, I've been all around the world. I've studied this medicine from the greatest leaders in this world. And they act like cancer is not a big deal. They act like, ready? Cystic fibrosis is a six-month deal, and then you're over with it. Here, it's a death sentence. It's a different understanding. It's a whole different science. It's a different way to look at your body. And here's the biggest problem with it. It entails the big R word, responsibility. No longer can you walk, once you, did anybody see the movie The Matrix, you know, Keanu Reeves' Matrix? Who has not seen it? You're all fired. You? <laughs> Why do I have time to teach? To watch a movie. Mm -hmm. You really have never seen it? You really are fired. Okay. <laughs> I, you can't be my friend anymore. Okay. <laughs> I'm fired. Okay, that you have to watch that in the next 30 days. Okay. All right. So you have it? I of course have it. Okay. I watched it 26 times at the movie theater. It's a documentary, <laughs> not a movie. This is the red pill. Welcome to the red pill. Okay? Once you know this information, I don't know how you ever go back into the regular world and not know this information. Honestly. And I hope that I've raised your awareness about things that you've never thought about before because that's what's happening. We're dying slowly in this country because nobody wants to talk about it and nobody wants to take responsibility. No longer are you going to be able to walk out of this door and go, it's not up to me how my health is. It's all about my genetics because that's only about 5% of your thing. It's a potential. It's not an absolute. It's a potential. Okay? And it's your lifestyle and the decisions you make that determine whether those potentials are turned on and if you're arriving at health or you're going towards degeneration. At any point in time, you decide you can turn around and go the other direction. It's completely up to you and nobody else. But that's the sucky part. Because in this country, we go, it doesn't matter what I do. Doc, just give me the pill so I can reduce my cholesterol. Then I'll go eat my cheeseburger. It's not my fault. No accountability. And that's the hard part about what we do and why we climb uphill every single day doing this therapy, this, this whole world of medicine, because people don't want to take responsibility for their health. Because it does matter what you eat. It does matter what you drink. It does matter what you expose yourself to. A thousand percent it does. And if you don't believe me, then ask my brothers who have been playing this experiment with me for 20 years because they thought I was crazy and I joined a cult. I'm not kidding you. <laughs> they thought my husband was a cult leader and that he had convinced me that I wasn't in pain when I really was and that I had literally gone off the deep end. And what happened to Kelly, she was a Cornell graduate and now she's doing this wacky medicine 20 years ago, 21 years ago. I have six nieces, one of which that has already suffered with cancer, scarlet fever twice, and shingles all within a five-year period. I have, I hope they never watch this, but oh well if they do. They know me well enough to know they shouldn't not change their lifestyle. My other brother uses $500 worth of prescription medications every single month just so he can control his allergies. He will not change his diet. He and I talk almost every single day and he knows that we don't talk about certain things because it just doesn't, you know, he is honest. He goes, listen, Cal, I don't want to live your way. I know how you live and it, I wouldn't want to eat that. He's, I've known my brother for my entire life. I have literally never seen him eat a vegetable. Ever in my life, never have I seen him eat a vegetable. I, well, one year I made butternut squash risotto for Thanksgiving. They all thought it was cheesy risotto. And my brother was pissed at me afterward when I told him it was butternut squash risotto. And he was like, I can't believe you made me eat butternut squash. And I was like, it's okay, Patrick, you'll survive. But I have been living this experiment for 21 years and I, I'm healthier than I've ever been, look younger than I have ever looked, honestly. I have more energy than 99% of the people I know. I sleep very little. I don't require a lot of sleep. I require a lot of fun. I require a lot of good, really good food. And I require a lot of laughing. Outside of that, I don't require much. And I feel good every day. I've been actually fighting something for a couple days. Can't you tell? You can hear my voice a little. And Heidi's been with me for like five days, the woman behind the camera. And uh, she's watched me fight it because I have a little bit of cough. Notice I have not coughed one time since I've been in this room. Because this was the best therapy I could ever do. Give my body some ions because my body needs negative ions. It's going to pull some toxins from me. My kid had a fever last week for five days. He took his first karate class. And 25 kids he was never exposed to before. And that night we had a raging fever. My kid's not vaccinated. I let his immune system build on its own. So he got exposed to 
25 new kids, and for five days I dealt with a fever. He didn't go to school, we let the fever burn, we gave him homeopathic support, and we let the fever burn. And then five days later, I'm not sleeping much. I don't have a lot of rest this weekend because I invited a crew to come up and help educate others and do some videoing. And so I've been working a little bit more this weekend than I normally do, and I didn't sleep as much, and I felt it. Because I didn't what? I didn't allow my parasympathetic nervous system to take care of it. I burned my sympathetic a little bit more, and my body compensated appropriately and said, <coughs> here's a little cough, because you're not sleeping as much as you need. And so today we were at the center, and I did a salt chamber, and here I am. Stand in the salt, knowing tonight I'll probably sleep like a baby and not cough at all. Because I regulate appropriately for the fact that my body's dealing with some kind of virus or bacteria that my son had. I don't need to identify it. I don't care. I'm just going to build up my own regulatory capacities and let it deal with it. Strengthen my immune system. Isn't that a cool way to live? Much better way to live. Aren't I cool? No, I'm just kidding. My aunt, so my aunt cool. is a nurse. Um, she was a nurse, and uh, my cousin has just been born with cystic fibrosis. Mm. And... Um, he turned 55 yesterday. Awesome! Yeah. That's now, awesome. Last year he did get a, a double lung transplant, but um, he's doing really well. That's and, awesome. But she was a nurse and she, she moved him out of uh, Elmer Park, New Jersey, and up to Newton, New Jersey to get him away from small, I mean, things like that, and to live in the country. And, and, uh, Change his environment and he lives longer. Huh. Yeah. So it's the environment our cells live in, not that our cells have anything bad that they're doing, it's the environment in which they live. You have more bacteria. You guys know we're more bacteria and fungus than we are cells, right? And more lymph than we are cells. So why the hell is everything about cellular biology? That's my question. I mean, I'm a biologist. I'm a scientist, right? All this medicine in this country is based on Louis Pasteur from 1850. 1850 is the science that the entire medical community in this allopathic world is based on. Do you know what year it is? Do you think there's been any advancement in science since 1850 about how the body works? Do you think maybe they're pushing on the rug because it doesn't make the pharmaceutical companies very much money if you actually know how to handle your health and you're not dependent upon pharmaceutical drugs and doctors to tell you and figure that out? By the way, I'm not a doctor. I'm working on my nurse practitioner license, so I'm going to have to change that soon, but I'm not a doctor. Okay, so understand that you have the capacity to heal within you and it's your ability to, to drain out your toxic load, number one, that will allow that to happen. You had a question. Yes, it's about um, draining the lymph fluid and mm -hmm. how that impacts your adrenals. Everything affects everything. Period. Okay. So your adrenals are a sympathetic, they produce adrenaline, which is your sympathetic fight flight hormone, right? Put you in that ooh, zone, right? We all love adrenaline. Well, most of us love adrenaline. So by working the lymphatics, you're enhancing the parasympathetics, which if you're enhancing your parasympathetics, you're going to by nature naturally reduce your sympathetics. Okay. Many folks fall asleep on the table. Have you ever fallen asleep on the table? No, my children are usually talking too much. They're talking too much. Hey, stop that. Enough of that. <laughs> I, I actually do have a little bit of a rule, but she's not in my actual house, so she doesn't get yelled at by me. No, I don't yell. But, well, not often. Um, that the first two or three sessions, it's fine if you talk. Like, I remember Donna's first session. She had to do it because I talk with my hands. Did anybody notice that? So I'm not great at doing lymph because I like to talk. And if I talk, I'm using my hands. And if I use my hands, then I can't be doing therapies on you, right? So she did the therapy, and I said to Donna, their next session is going to be much better than this session because I have you in sympathetic mode because I'm talking to you. The follow-up session should really not be talking so you can go into that parasympathetic rest, heal, and digest mood. Like, almost fall asleep. The best thing you can do is fall asleep on the table because your body's in complete healing mode. It's the best thing. You could do limp in this room. Another story, but it's just a thought. It'd be really cool. Really. It'd be so cool. But no, it wouldn't because I don't want machine in here. No, just kidding. No machine in this room. <laughs> No technology in this room, just a, just a joke. <laughs> It'd just be great to have all the ions, that's all I'm thinking. Because it's, we often recommend to do ion cleanse foot baths after the um, lymphatic enhancement because it really helps your body continue. Because we're enhancing your lymph that day we do it. The effects you feel are anywhere from one to three days, five days later. And normally what folks feel is, oh my gosh, I feel a little bit lighter. I poop better, I sleep better. Maybe I get a little headache if you don't drink enough water. But in general, 
general, I feel a little bit lighter. About 10% of the time, those first two to three sessions, you can definitely feel worse because you're moving your toxic waste barrel. You know, so it's, it's not that your lymph is moving. It's what's in your lymph that's moving that makes you feel like crap. Because I did feel like crap. Yeah. So, you know, we had those crazy winds over the last week around those crazy... Three days, three days later. It took me two days, you know, I was like, wow, I feel like I have the flu, I kind of feel weird. Right. But by the third day, I felt really good. Yeah, yeah. And as, as you did follow-up care, mm -hmm. you didn't feel that follow-up? Yeah, okay. Like, yeah, the yeah. And you had had your amalgams out well, year, many years prior uh, yeah. with a non-biological dentist. Correct. Right. So I would expect her to feel a little bit bad on the first one because she's still got mercury in her body that we have that we're working on continuing to detoxify. But what did we have to do before before we detoxified was drain, 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 drain. Um, there was something I thought about that I wanted to, but it, it'll come back to me. Donna, you look like the cat that ate the canary. <laughs> so Donna, can, can I? So Donna has um, done what, seven sessions, six sessions, eight sessions? Seven, eight. Something like that. Yeah. So you did like five sessions, five weeks in a row between like uh, right around uh, Thanksgiving time. Yeah. And you noticed a, a good, like what did you notice? I don't want to put words in your mouth. I, I would get more like energy afterwards. Did you ever feel bad in the beginning? I don't remember, honestly. Yeah, like, like the first day. Okay. Feel and then you I kind of feel like you had a little bit more energy, and then I would come back down again. And then I would go back up again. And... Did you find towards the fifth, day, the fifth therapy that you were getting more days of feeling good before it bounced back, or still just one day? Yeah, I think it was lasting longer, and then I... You know, then you took a break. I did the holidays. And... Oh, and this is good. And then you took a break for three or four days, had the holidays... Didn't eat the greatest food, had some other stressors. I remember having that. And then you came back in January and you did with that first session. It had been like five or six weeks, I think, since the previous. And you weren't feeling good, right? Like your bowels had slowed down, things. And how did you manage after that first session? Hey, da, 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 da. I will answer your question. Stop. She knows you. I do. I know. You look familiar. But she just came in. But <laughs> let us focus on this so everybody can hear this okay, information. <laughs> so that, yeah, then it's. So after that session in January, when you came back um, and you hadn't been feeling good because your bowels had slowed down, your joint pain had increased a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. How did you feel after that one session? That it, I had my, went back to having the day or two of energy. And then, good. You know. So you recovered faster than you did the first yeah. time around. Yeah. Perfect. And that's how it should work. It's, listen, you didn't get sick overnight, you're not going to get well overnight. It's a, it's a process. And, you know, most people that walk in our center that have been, have any kind of chronic illness, we tell them, however long you've been ill, it's going to take you half the amount of time to get well. You're not going to work here every day to do that, but you're going to gently and slowly just turn in the other direction and continue to go in this direction versus to this direction. But it's, you can't change it all overnight. You're not going to change your diet overnight. You're going to not change your lifestyle overnight. Half of you are going to forget about doing anything about your Wi-Fi when you leave out of here. And then you're going to hear it somewhere else over the next couple months. You're going to go, oh, it was that person at the salt chamber, that crazy woman. She was talking all about Wi-Fi. Maybe I'll try it this time and I'll do it. And maybe you'll get it the fifth time you hear it. I don't know. But some of you will go and take the information. And you'll start to feel different. That's going to determine your success. Compliance. End of story. You know, I... I love chocolate cake more than almost anything. Like really good chocolate cake. I don't eat it all the time, but I just really love it. Now, when I was in high school, I'm not kidding you, it was a meal for me. I mean, I, horrible, but my, we used to have a microwave. I don't use microwaves, couldn't pay me to use a microwave. And my father used to, I had to make chocolate cake or chocolate chip cookies every single day for him. By the way, he died at 55 and had cancer seven times. So I'm sure that, that was a good, um, uh, you know, habit of his life. And he'd wake up at three o'clock in the morning and eat it, which was also super good for you. <laughs> so I was tasked since about eight or nine years old with making this fresh dessert for my father every single day. And we got those, remember microwave cakes where you just like mix it in a bowl, throw it in this oh thing, the microwave. That was my lunch for like five years oh. every day because I lived across the street from the high school. Oh. Bad scene. I used to eat that. I can't imagine why I had allergies and asthma. I mean, if for, I, 
I pray that my testimonial is on our website because we just have a new website and I'm pretty sure it's on there. Pretty positive. If not, it's on brmi.online. Did you guys hear about that website? <laughs> It's, it's on there as well. But look at my testimonial because Heidi was very skilled in helping me. She put my before picture, embedded it into it. I never would have figured out how to do that. But my before picture is pretty scalding because I was on painkillers for three years. I had horrible allergies my whole life. I had acne my whole life. I had asthma my whole life. Prior to finding this world, I have not dealt with asthma, allergies, food intolerances, hey cat problems let alone back pain in 21 years i'd say my experiment is going swimmingly well <laughs> and i used to feel like i was 90 when i was 12 uh, 20 23 90 did not look forward to my life at all and now i'm 45 and really looking forward to turning 120. not tomorrow but soon not too soon i have a lot to do between now and then so the fascia is the skin inside your skin. Oh gosh, I'm out of time, so we'll talk about fascia next time. Okay, but fascia, quickly, is, so this is your skin, and inside your skin, if I was, if you were all to die today and I was to do autopsies, which is my next life, because that's so cool, I'm gonna take your skin off, not really, but <laughs> underneath it is this thin layer called fascia. How many make a turkey at and you pull the skin up and you put, and you know that like little like filmy, tacky, yeah, that's fascia and everybody has it, okay? The fascia is where your, um, all your bones, your organs, your plasma, the blood is all held in that fascia. And I'll leave you with this analogy. When we meet folks and they have exposures to all these things that we talked about or silver fillings or the blockades to healing, what happens first is the fascia gets tight, okay? And the lymph is inside the fascia and then the lymph gets a little bit tighter, okay? So take this analogy. Let's say you're a pant size six, okay? So your body's a size six, but you put on a size pants that's a size two. How good does that feel when you go, try to try to sit down, her face is the greater. She's like, ugh. <laughs> it's not so great. You can do it, but you know, a butt might pop off or something might slice open or, you know, or you're not gonna be able to move real well because they're so tight. So the point is, if your lymph is a two and your fascia is a four and your body's a six, let's first get your fascia to prepare for your lymph therapy. Let's get your fascia to a six so that when we open the lymph, it goes right to the six. Because for many years, we opened up the lymph and it only stayed a certain level and they would have to always continue to do lymph every so often. They'd get really much better, but they'd have to stay on the lymph table every two weeks or one month or two months or whatever, it'd all come back. So if we open the fascia and then open the lymph, we get much better results. And this is somewhat new information that we are redesigning schools right now. The woman in Australia and I are developing a curriculum and somebody else in the local area and three medical doctors that are lymph gods in this country. And we are developing this curriculum so we can open up a school right here in Pottstown, right here, for the only, don't tell anybody, yes, my fascia trigger point lymphatic release. Nobody's, oh wow, the physical therapist says and goes, oh wow, because she knows. The reason that people's bodies don't work is their fascia is jammed up from scars and everything else. They can't use their shoulder, then their lymph gets clogged, now they got frozen shoulder. And instead of doing surgery, you can go open your fascia, open your lymph, and now your shoulder will move. How is that amazing? Do you see this all day long? Yes. So, less time for surgeries, more time for body care, okay? So quickly, I want to go to your situation, may I? My situation? Yes, your situation. So she asked me about, you okay or no? Yeah, yeah, no. Okay. So she asked me about lipedema versus lymphedema, L-I-P-I, lip, lipid, like fat, okay? So there's a difference in diagnosis, right? And so she asked me a question, have you read a lot about lipedema? And I said, nope. You'll find I'm the most honest, blunt person you probably ever met in your life. It definitely turns a lot of people off or it turns you really on one way or the other. So I was like, nope, haven't done a lot of reading about that. So she starts to explain, she's going through all the details and obviously she knows more about than I do. But you know what I know? Her diagnosis doesn't matter to me, no offense. What matters to me is, 
Do you have any blockades to your regulatory capacities? Let's start there. Because it doesn't matter what I know about your diagnosis. What it matters about what I know about your body. Your body isn't able to heal because you have silver fillings, you have root canals, and you have scars on your body. Let's address those and see what's left. Then once we address those, let's get it out of your body. Let's get the, the cells of the body, the lymphatics moving and flowing better to see if that alleviation from the body will allow the body to go back into healing capacities and not build lipedema. But I know the body's not making a mistake. I know that whatever your body's doing is doing its best job to protect you from whatever the hell's inside you, making you not feel well. And it is working its butt off trying to do it. And it's never making a mistake. So you need to applaud your body for doing the best job it possibly can with the information it has to keep you as healthy as possible. You're functionable, right? You, you might not like everything that's going on, but you're functionable. That's not that bad. You know, I, I'm not trying to minimize your situation oh, no, at no, all. No, no. But what I'm saying is we haven't even scratched the surface of finding out what the underlying causes are to address the underlying causes. I don't want to chase down your diagnosis. I want to work with your teeth, get your lymph moving, get some of the, the blockades alleviated, and see what's left. Well, I have felt better since they took that death band that was cinching my stomach in half out last year. What? I had that for 18 years. What's that? The lap band. The oh. Band. Band Gee, that would never clog your lymph and your fascia at all. Mm -hmm. No. 18 years I mean, the reality is that's binding. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? I mean, did you ever see those pictures of the women in China that used yeah. to bind to their feet? Yeah. Well, that's what your fascia is doing all over your body. Any injury, any emotional trauma, and Wi-Fi absolutely makes the fascia smaller. Oh, yeah. That is a theory, not a proven fact, but I'm saying it absolutely My does. Prove to me it doesn't. Strapped that thing for 18 years. I'm pretty sure it was uh, it. Absolutely. The body was trying to regulate for it. It's trying to get rid of it. It's dead. It's like, I don't know what that is. That's not biological. That doesn't belong in here. Try to get rid of it. And root canals are no different. Root canals are dead teeth. If, if I had my toe die from gangrene because I was outside and froze it off, I wouldn't say, oh, you know, but I want to have five toes now. So just take the root out of the toe so I don't feel the death that's happening in my toe and leave my toe. I'd say take the toe off. It's dead. And if it's dead material, the body's going to try to get rid of it. But it's okay in my mouth? Going back to my original vet situation, if I have an animal, I take it to the vet, the first thing they do is a look in the mouth. In medical school, they're taught your teeth are outside your body. I kid you not. They are taught your teeth are outside your body. Are your teeth outside your body? Nope. Are you a medical doctor? So there's a lot of things we raised tonight. I know you have some questions. We'll take a few minutes to answer some questions. Educate yourself. Come and get a session of lymph. It won't make you feel bad. If it does, you need it to feel bad because of what your lymph was moving. And then keep doing them until you feel a little bit better and you will feel better and better. It's cumulative. We recommend to do five or six to start with, see where you're at, and then figure out how well you need to manage from there. If that's all you're dealing with, God bless you. If you have other symptoms, other symptomologies, you need further help, contact your wellness and ambler. We'd be happy to help you through the process. There's lots of different ways to work with us. We have a membership area. We have personalized wellness, so forth. But the foot baths, the salt, the salt room rather and the lymphatic enhancement will put you well on your way to help open up your drainage and then see what's left and if you do have silver fillings or root canals and you would like some information about that you can go to brmi.online i know i sound like a broken record but it's a great resource and i'm so tired of people talking to google and yahoo and getting misinformed go get properly informed and share it with the world let them know too and secondarily if you're gonna do that, only do it with a skilled dentist. Please, I want everybody to raise your hand and promise me you're not gonna to go to your standard dentist right now. Raise your hand. I promise, Kelly, I will not go to my standard dentist and handle my silver fillings or my root canals. If I choose to do that, I will only do it with a skilled biological knowing dentist. Thank you. Good. So, shall we take a little journey out to see the lymph machine? Yep, okay. So, this is the lymph enhancement technology. So there's two different types of attachments. There's the Eclipse head, which is a bonus that we have that's just 
just. It's LED light and it breaks up fibrous tissue. So we often will put this over the cisterna while we're opening up the two termini, or we'll put this on a scar because we didn't get to really talk about scars, but scars, it's nice to see everybody's faces, by the way. Hi, everybody. Um, it, scars, this will help break up the adhesions of scars too, because scars create like a detour, an impasse in the body. So we, we address scars in many ways. So this just enhances the ability of what the machine already does. This is just an add-on that we add. These are the two therapy heads. These are um, glass bulbs that are made individually, and so they're always a little bit different size and color, but essentially, can you hit the lights real quick? I want them to be able to see the, oh, sorry. the um, light. You can hear it. Oh yeah, I can. Oh yeah. Okay, so I can do that with everybody, it's fine. So, Donna's like, I've heard it before. Let me just blast your termini since I gotcha. So it's three noble gases in these therapy heads. There's xeon, argonon, and kryptonite. Isn't that cool? This really is future, future medicine here. So you can see that it lights up, right? And it's always a little different because the gases in here are not exactly the same. They should be exactly the same, but you know, if you're measuring gases, it's extremely difficult. And so it should be a 70-30 split, a 70-30, no, 70-20-10 split, but sometimes it's 71, 31, 22. So the light colors will change. But essentially what you do is you open up the termini, you blast the different areas, and it just feels soothing and gentle. And then the practitioner can go ahead and then start to open up the traffic after you open up the toll booth, right? So after we do this, then we work all the other areas of the body and we blast the nodes throughout the body and then we end with a foot bath. It takes about an hour to an hour and a half depending if we're doing the whole body. You can do the whole front and then the back. And so it's very soothing. Whoever These cords aren't that long so if you haven't heard it, come over here and get near me. I'm not going to take it all over the place. Is it possible I just felt something? I mean, like, when you touch... Uh, yes. Because I felt something, like, vibrate down. So I don't yes. know what that means. But. No, the first time I ever used this, I'm sensitive. Obviously, you are too, Bryn. Um, but when I first used this, I had it right here, and I literally felt stuff moving through my face. I was like, whoa, whoa, what's, what's going on in my face? And it was literally, like, moving my lymph. And is the light that's doing it? So thank you for asking that question because I did not explain that. So the three noble gases create a vibrational acoustic massage, a vibration of sound that massages the cells that get the cells to do this movement. That's all it is. So it just, that's all it is. It's just a, a vibration for your cells to stimulate their movement. And you can see it's very soothing. So we, j we do the whole body. We won't do the face if you have current silver fillings or root canals because we don't want to elicit any kind of further movement than is already going to happen by naturally by chewing gum or drinking hot water or whatever. But the, the lymphatic, the sound is kind of soothing too. And we have different um, settings. You know, we can set it from zero to a thousand, from low to high. So we alter that. That's the practitioner's knowledge, knowing what setting to have it at. And then again, they do a lot of manual pumping around that as well. I've never done it like this. This is a lot of fun. <laughs> I'm sure the video is great in the dark. You do feel it. So how screwed up? I mean, I have a root canal and I've got four fillings. So, 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 be honest. Call the funeral. I'm honest. Call the funeral home now, my friend. No, I'm just kidding. No, none of us gets out alive. So. Until I get that, you know, taken care of, I mean, I know I've got brain toxicity because I went and got one of those um, thermography full, like, scans done mm -hmm. recently. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I don't and know why you're getting an extra little look. Yeah, like, Go ahead. And, and that was lady. one of the things that came up, and it was because of the silver fillings. We were, we're figuring stuff? this out. So how effective? I mean, you can only do what you can do because I've already got this mess. Mm -hmm. So... <laughs> Okay, so I'll answer your question. So somebody comes to me and they go, hey, I got water in my basement. Can you clean it up? Yeah, but then. Sure, I water. can. Do you have a roof leak though? If you have a roof leak, I'll keep cleaning up your basement, but you might better just fix your roof so that when we clean up your basement, it stays cleaned up. Now, some folks are so sick that they need to clean up their basement before they handle the roof because they're not gonna go through that process very easily if their drainage doesn't work. So I always recommend before you do amalgam remediation to start with two or three lymph sessions. Make sure your lymph is really moving well and then do amalgam remediation. Anybody not experience that? What? Anybody not experience this? Oh. So, Did you? Yeah. Okay. Can you turn the lights back on then? Sure. Thanks. So if you have a root canal, you recommend that the tooth is extracted out. So nobody likes to hear, yes, I want your tooth to come out. Let me put it to you this way. 
Teeth are a part of your body. It's very emotional to lose a tooth. You know, it's like losing a part of you. It really is. And I would never recommend anybody get anything done that they're not ready to do. A. B. I would really make sure that you're prepared for what that entails and to get it out, not only of your mouth, but then to get the disease stay out of the, the tissue. I would do it only with a skilled dentist and I would do it when it's the right time for your case. If you came to me and said, I had metastatic cancer, I'd say, uh, let me go get the pliers and pull out your root canal. Not really, because I'm not a doctor and I couldn't do that, but I would caution you to do it tomorrow right away you don't have time to waste because you're already dealing with the diagnosis if you don't have a diagnosis you're dealing with you got time nothing is an emergency the best detox is a slow detox and the better the drainage is the better the detox will go so it doesn't have to go as slow eventually but start slow do not go fast yeah. I appreciate